Hey, hey, I'm back for a little bit more uh, streaming and work.
net een mailtje van uh, school. Het is gewoon helemaal over op andere onderwerpen.
Oh, hey guys, sorry. My god, 12 viewers. I was uh, so focused at my work. On my work, I totally didn't see anybody in there. <laughs> All right, apologies. Let me uh, scroll back up. Oh, thanks for the raid. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yeah, I just came back from a break and then I started the stream up again, start working. I had no clue. Uh, and I was so focused on what I was doing, creating the survey. Yes, I'm very intensely looking at my work. <laughs> Thanks, that's a cool logo. Yeah, you're, you guys are super stealthy. Oh man, that actually might be a record having 12 viewers, so I appreciate it. <laughs> I shall pay more attention in the future. Why are the thumbnails not loading? All right, you have a good day. Give it your best. Thanks for uh, for joining. Hey, K Wright, nice to meet you. Welcome to the stream. Uh, that's a bit annoying that it's not loading the thumbnail, so I kind of have to guess now what is what. This may be the one. Lovely to see all of these uh, new faces. Hello, K Wright. And uh, Rockcom, what 23, what, what? All right, for sure. I'm. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm from the Netherlands, so I'm a Dutchie. Um, I've been running companies for over 13 years. I started uh, this new company, Lorsmith, about three, four years ago. And uh, yeah, we we make uh, books and card decks essentially for for dungeon masters. So for for D and D. Um, it's really all about making inspirational source books and um, kind of like inspirational card decks and to help you with story prompts and on the fly idea generation, either when you're prepping the game or during play. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun making project uh, products. <laughs> Another Chris, apologies. Uh, we can figure out a new name for me. And uh, yeah, we typically do uh, two big Kickstarters a year. Um, a few months ago, we finished the Remarkable Cults Kickstarter. And that book we are, uh, are developing now. And currently, I'm put together, uh, put, putting together a survey um, so that people can chime in their ideas for, for the next book, which is going to be Remarkable Guilds. Um, yeah, so lots going on. And in the meantime, we're also finishing a project from last year which is called Wondrous Expeditions which is a book about wilderness travel through uh, forests and uh, yeah so we have lots and lots going on actually um, very busy times lots of fun as well I'm uh, having a hard time finding a particular image uh, and talking at the same time <laughs> I'm such a pro streamer.
So uh, I hope that explains it a little bit. Uh, feel free to ask away any specifics. Hey, uh, Hickstorino and uh, Corpse in the Corner. Hey. Um, I don't know if it's hard. It, it's definitely uh, hard work, a lot of work. Uh, but we got, uh, I think we're down to our 11th Kickstarter now. So uh, you build up experience creating books. So in the beginning, sometimes it's hard indeed you know you have no clue what you're doing um i already had a background in product development so I, I did come in with some experience but we definitely you know from going from every kickstarter to kickstarter we definitely learned a lot every time we uh so it's uh but i'm i'm enjoying it more than i, I would say that it's like hard work every day So my God, I'm having a really hard time finding the image that I would like to add. So hang in there. Looking at my Mac Finder all the time is super inspiring, of course. So how about this one? Uh, COVID has impacted pretty much everything um, from logistics to so transportation of the goods to uh, printing costs. I'm not sure. I, I do know the paper stock has become more expensive. So yeah, shipping costs have gone up. Um, there's pretty much nothing that it hasn't affected. There's also positive aspects, of course. People buy more online. Uh, so for a company like me, which, you know, I sell primarily through my own web shop and Nord Games web shop. So for me, it's been, uh, been an absolute boost seeing uh, an increase in sales. So, um, but yeah, it's not all good. There are some, some pros and cons to it for sure. So uh, do we need to find uh, a new name for me? Another Chris then? Or uh, is Chris just fine? Just, uh, <laughs> just uh, switching my screen for a little bit. I need to check an email real quick. Like to keep that uh, confidential. Um, there we go, we're back. I can be corpse. <laughs> uh, Jake. Uh, Jake sounds nice. I don't know if that. Fits, uh, fits my appearance. <laughs> so we have Corpse, we have uh, K. Wright, Hicksterino, that's a badass name. I uh, can really do with a coffee, so I'm gonna quickly uh, pop in a Nespresso capsule. What else? And then I'm gonna uh, maybe jump to color, uh, color up a few more illustrations. That's, I think, a little bit more fun for you guys to watch. So let me switch to Photoshop. What I was trying to get done today is finish this uh, Wondrous Expeditions card deck. And really the thing is coloring up more of these uh, black and white illustrations so i'm gonna grab a coffee i'll be right back in 20 seconds and yeah let's color up some more artwork
So uh, if you are new to Loresmith, uh, then check out the website. You can uh, check out the, the products that we already that we've already released. Let me know what you think, and uh, nice to meet new people for sure, uh, any day. So I guess I have to thank uh, Rakam for rating me and bringing all these cool new people uh, into, into my Twitch stream. We, uh, we also have a Discord, so let me uh, grab the link of that. There's uh, a really chill, chill vibe in there in the Discord, and uh, we uh, typically are, are very transparent. We ask a lot of our customers to interact, partake in surveys, um, help think about the products, give feedback. Um, we share a lot of behind-the-scenes materials, so kind of like this stream where you just see me you know work work on the books and the card decks so yeah if you enjoy learning a bit more about you know what goes on doing kickstarters and how the products get made then this is really the the place to be for you i think right so i got the uh, coffee So let's get stuck in. Is the uh, is the microphone sounding all right? Is the volume okay? I've uh, set up a new microphone just the other day, so I'm curious if it all sounds uh, bona fide. And uh, apologies again for not seeing everybody come in. If you uh, followed the channel, then I also totally missed your follow notification. Uh, so if you want to shout out, then just unfollow and follow again. <laughs> If, if you like, then I'm going to cheer for you. So let's uh, whip out our paintbrushes and get coloring. I've been told I can do a fairly nice Bob Ross impression, so it's always cool during the painting. So uh, let's uh, grab just a good old two inch brush and uh, the canvas is wet, slick and ready to go. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Thanks. Now then, let's uh, paint ourselves a little happy tree and in your world Anything can happen. Don't even think about it. Just let the brush slide. And remember, we don't make mistakes. We're just little happy accidents. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. Yeah, it's a nice uh, microphone. It was uh, it's actually uh, quite a bit higher end than just the average uh, podcast mic, etc. So. It actually uh, really sounds good indeed. I was uh, I was happily surprised. It's actually a microphone that you build yourself, 
So you, uh, it's like a DIY kit, and then you whip out your uh, soldering iron, and you can uh, make it yourself. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> So I'm going to jump in with the brush and start adding some shadows to uh, bring out some depth in the piece. Some water in a piece. Let me paint in that water. So I think this is in water as well. Yeah, again, I appreciate you guys watching. It's a lot of fun uh, meeting all these new people. I've been streaming more often lately, and I've been enjoying it uh, quite a bit, actually. So it's, uh, it's just uh, nice to, to work on these kind of stuff and be able to talk to a few people. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been great, actually. I've never gone into, I uh, never had the ambition to like, you know, grind it out and really build up like this giant following. I'm way too busy running to company to really have the aspirations to, to be like a, a huge streamer uh, personality. So for me, it's just, just something like colleagues to talk to while I'm working here from home. So. So just a different kind of motivation, really. Yeah, it's uh, I like yeah, like I said, I've been enjoying it a lot, and for me, it definitely uh, definitely works well. Not all the time. Sometimes it's just, I mean, it's actually a, a goddamn skill to be able to talk and and do work at the same time. I uh, I really gained a lot of respect for uh, for pro streamers, gamers that uh, can do that kind of thing. So sometimes I just decide not to stream just because it's a little easier for me to focus and get specific work done. But for example, right now there's a lot of uh, coloring artwork and layout artwork. And that for me, that's perfect to do while also being able to be a bit chatty. Hey, K, okay, right? Thanks, I appreciate it. I'm glad it's uh, inspiring. Yeah, I got a lot of Photoshop experience. I've been, I'm 41 years old now. I uh, hate to admit, but um, yeah, I started doing graphics design. Jeez, uh, I think when I was, I don't know, something like 14, 15 years old. So I've got a lot of experience uh, by now. And uh, yeah, so it, it's kind of a skill you build up over the years, really. I'm gonna throw in, throw in a little sky here. 
and maybe try and make it a nighttime scene. Something I haven't done before for uh, for these images. If it doesn't work out, I'm just gonna get rid of it again. So let's throw in some stars and perhaps a moon. So let's add a gradient color overlay over the entire color section and just recolor it a little bit to have that nighttime tint shade. So let me swing around the colors a bit more. Let's uh, make the lanterns gr glow. All right, see what that looks like. All right. Um, I think that works. I just need to tone it down a little bit, perhaps. All right. I'm going to go in as a last step. I'm going to add some some bright white highlights some titanium white um, just to make the image pop a little bit more so I'm just gonna try and find these places where I imagine the light would hit and really add in these uh, almost comic book style kind of very bright edge highlights that will add some contrast make makes the image pop a little bit more And uh, then I think this one is uh, pretty much done. What do you eat when I'm busy? <laughs> nice, that's a good question. I actually started watching my diet uh, quite a bit more. I'm trying to lose weight, especially uh, around the waist area, of course, for, uh, for us guys. And um, I actually um, stopped drinking any soda. I drink a lot more water. Um, I uh, really don't snack anymore. So no, no chips and just things that are full of sugar and salt. And uh, so I just try to really watch my calorie intake and uh, slowly I'm losing weight I'm also starting exercising a bit more so uh, I hope I hope for a little bit more progress actually um, yeah I, uh, I used to play a lot of D&D um, let's say in my teenage years so that's uh, some time ago I, I think I played 
up to I was about 25. And then I just got so busy running companies, it, it kind of became impossible really to, um, to play regularly anymore. Now, you know, I work during the day and because I would say 80% of my customer base is in the US, uh, I also have a lot of meetings with US people. So typically I have a lot of meetings in the evening as well on top of my regular workday. Um, so then when I really get some time off, I try to make music. So I really, I got much more into electronic music after quitting playing in bands. So I'm doing some live streaming with my music, um, basically live DJing, but with a modular synthesizer <laughs> for, uh, for the real nerds among us. Uh, so yeah, I, I really enjoy doing that kind of thing uh, at the moment. I'm going to jump straight into the next illustration. So um, but yeah, I kind of miss playing d and I tried playing it online, uh, but I felt it was pretty painful. I already sit in front of a computer the entire day. So then to, to kind of quit work, have dinner and come back, sit behind the same computer. It just it kind of didn't work for me. And um, there were some cool things about the virtual experience, uh, but I just preferred to sit at a table with some friends and, and play the game that way, really. Um, but yeah, like I said, I just had to make some choices about what to spend my free time on. And I think because I make D&D products for a living, uh, I'm already spending my days, you know, thinking about D and D products, reading about D and D products. So, at one point, you're kind of like saturated, and uh, you want to just get away from it. And really, otherwise, the the free time uh, doesn't really feel so much as as free time, if that makes sense. So I guess that's uh, really the downside of running a company is, um, yeah, it, it becomes work. I mean, it's a lot of fun work. It's don't get me wrong. I really enjoy doing it, but it's really different just coming at it as a GM or a player versus um, doing it for a living, having to deal with, you know, all of the business side of it and, uh, you know, the financials, uh, planning Kickstarters, running budgets, having meetings about it, it's just uh, totally changes the game. So I wouldn't want to trade it though, because uh, I really enjoy doing it. It's fantastic to, to deal with customers and see excited backers with our projects, etc. So I, I really enjoy doing it. So uh, I wouldn't want to miss it really. This illustration is going to go very quickly because it's so, yeah, it's quite easy. It's not a lot of detail. It's just uh, some simple shading and nice colors all already go, going to go a long way. So I'm going to jump in and paint in these white highlights. And uh, let me say a hi and thanks again. I really appreciate, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I had absolutely no idea that uh, the stream would get a bunch more viewers than it typically does. So really nice. Yeah, I appreciate it. I was actually shocked when I looked at the uh, viewer counter and said 12 viewers. I was like, holy shit, I haven't been paying attention. I guess I could make these vines uh, greener just so we have uh, just some color variation at least.
I'm really trying to power on with these illustrations a little bit, not, you know, not like to rush it. Um, but the card deck, we had planned to have it at the manufacturer next week. And it's already Friday, so we uh, ended up in a little bit of a time crunch with uh, this one because it was decided very late in the game that we were, uh, we were going to color up all of the images. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a rush at the moment, just getting everything done. I don't want to merge. Convert to CMYK color space, save. And uh, let's jump back and relink it onto the card frame. Lovely. I actually like the look of it. So I'm going to put in a background color just to add some color variation. So like a cool bluish tone. I'm actually totally color, uh, color blindish. So a lot of the time I can't even tell if it's blue or purple or whatever, but I do see if the colors go nicely together. So that's at least something. Uh, needs to be a little lighter here. Just a little bit more contrasty. And then I think it will look good. Yeah, I love it. The highlight really puts the attention on the, uh, on the skull there, right? Sweet. I actually uh, really like this one. Um, this one is already colored, but it lacks a little bit of contrast. So I'm very quickly going to jump in and help this piece out a little bit in the contrast departments. So instead of instantly adding more highlights, I'm just going to make the shadows a bit stronger first. And that will give the illusion of the highlights being brighter. Because at one point you, you just cannot go brighter, uh, brighter than bright. And now I'm going to add some highlights. So I want to have some rays of light as if it's filtering through the forest canopy. Like these light streaks. So let's see if this looks, uh, pops a little bit more. I think it can still be a little bit brighter. Um, all right. Hey, uh, Ro Roaster Envelope, interesting nickname, welcome. <laughs> um, what makes color drawing in Photoshop look as if it's real? Well, I mean, this has a very, uh, I don't know, color book, comic, illustration style to it. So I'm not sure if it, if you could call it looking real. Um, but what I do try is to have somewhat realistic, like if the light's coming from the right side and the shadows are on the left side and you try to have some cooler tones in the shadows and warmer colors in the, in the highlight area. So um, I think having not too, too bright colors helps with the realism. So if things are a little bit more toned down, that typically gives it a more, uh, a more realistic look. I think this illustration actually benefits from having a little color in the background. So I'm going to try that real quick. And a lot of it also just comes down to taste really. Um, 
for a fantasy book i think in the end it's just if it looks cool and badass and makes you want to pick up the book and read it then i think it's a job well done so Shifting the color palette around a little bit. Okay, the background is nice, but it's just too dark, so. And I up to transparency uh, quite a bit. So I said this was going to be a quick fix, but I'm actually spending some time on it. So what the hell? And uh, welcome to the stream, sir or madam, not sure. I appreciate you uh, dropping in. And really, if you have any questions, just uh, feel welcome to ask. If it's about how we run our Kickstarters, how products get made, printed, um, anything really, just uh, feel welcome to ask. Nice, I appreciate it. Yeah, that raid come came pretty unexpected. I was I was making a, a survey that we're gonna send out later today where people can um, pitch their ideas for a new book that we're gonna make. And I was so focused at, at what I was doing. Really, I, I had no clue that I was raided. And I don't have the stream sound effects on. I was listening to some music, so it was like, all of a sudden there was 12, 13 viewers and uh, everybody was laughing like, hey, this guy's not really paying attention, right? And uh, sh hey, sure, this guy looks uh, sure looks focused. <laughs> so I was just sitting there uh, wide-eyed, concentrating, being totally oblivious. So uh, yeah, guys. Um, This sounds like something fun for me to listen to. Eve Online, 10 years anniversary symphony. That sounds, why haven't I looked at that earlier? Oh, is it a talk show? Is there music? There is music, nice. So I'm gonna put that on in the background. Yeah, so welcome uh, from the raid. I really appreciate it. Love to, to meet all the new people here. Ja, ik zit wel in de stream, dus ik ben de hele tijd aan het praten. Ja, maakt niet uit. Het is zo heet. Oh. Dan zet ik de echo even aan. Het is zo warm. Oh. Even die uh, dingetjes aan de kant zetten dan, dat zal wel even helpen. Right, right. I uh, really like a lot of the uh, old school books 
I do think the new books look uh, very good. You know, all of the full color artwork really looks amazing. Um, but I also really like the aesthetic of some of the older materials, like um, uh, the Shadowdale books from, what is it, third or three and a half edition. I, I really like that. Um, just maybe it's uh, colored by nostalgia. That could be the case. But I definitely am a sucker for the more of the retro uh, vibe of those old school books. I think the cover artwork, uh, cover designs from some of the older D&D &D books also look a lot more interesting than some of the new ones, which are look just very modern and sparse. I need to look something up real quick. Um, download a few files. And then we can carry on. Oh, that's a good suggestion. I uh, hadn't heard about it actually, so Sounds like something that uh, I need to check out, really. I'm not sure if my microphone is clipping, but let me know if it sounds in any way distorted. Hate. Ik had net, uh, ik had helemaal niet door, ik was uh, heel geconcentreerd aan het werk en toen had iemand de stream gepromoot. Oh. Dus dan had ik in één keer iets van 15 kijkers of zo. en die uh, zaten allemaal te lachen van, uh, oh hij is er wel uh, geconcentreerd uit en uh, volgens mij heeft hij niet door dat wij hier allemaal zijn. Dat is echt geinig. Uh, ik heb nu jouw files gedownload. Oké. Okay. Oh, is die hier? Ja, die kan best brutaal zijn, hè? Ja, als iedereen het insmeren, dan zou ik zeggen, dan heb ik even insmeren. Nee, hoor. Ik ga nou ook vanuit wel waar dat moet, want het is heel uh, niet. Nee, ja. want ik heb er vanochtend al ingesmeerd. Ik ga maar duizend, nou, want dat is wel uitgewerkt. Nee, mama heeft een heel speciaal zalfje. Dat, uh, ja, dat is echt zo zitten. En dan, uh, ja. Redelijk eigenwijs. Ja. Ja. Dat zal maar Iedereen vraagt zich af waarom we Nederlands praten nu. Even kijken. Heb jij ze allemaal gestuurd? Want ik zie die... Uh... Nee, alleen die laatste... Had je ook die ene kerel die, uh, die groene gesmolten uh, duwt? Oh, kun jij die wel sturen? Die heb ik nou nodig, namelijk. Is goed. Ja, als WhatsApp ook werkt, dan vind ik dat goed. Ik ben blij van je beschikbaar over het idee. Nee, maar dan download ik hem nu meteen. Right, right. Almost ready, almost ready to continue.
Uh, had jij hem gestuurd? Oké. Okay. Alright guys, I'm gonna get on with the work. Okay, super. I'm just gonna tweak this one a little bit. It's almost ready, I think. Uh, adding some uh, some of the white highlights to make the piece pop and then I think it's just about ready I'm gonna add some uh, subtle texture overlay real quick just the least little touch Bob Ross would say Let me zoom in here a bit. There we go, I think that should uh, look good on the card, so let's have a look. The background is a little... Uh, a little dark. Now I wish I wouldn't have merged it. But let's uh, brighten it up a little bit.
Okay. Yeah, that uh, looks good to me. So, there's another one done. So we have that one, this one. The uh, gnome guy. This one I think uh, is now in my inbox. Let's uh, have a look. We transfer, get my files, download. Is it ready? Relink, relink. So I had my wife and uh, also other artists we hired color up some of the images as well because it's just uh, too many for for me to really finish on my own in uh, in the time that we have. There is about I don't know upwards of 80 illustrations I, I think so it's just uh, a lot of ground to cover so some of these have been uh, big colored by other people and I I just tweaked them a little bit it's just uh, just some minor touch-ups. They uh, couldn't really work on it in the context of the book, so it's, it's a little hard to judge just how it looks exactly. Um, so for me, it's just a little bit easier to, to make those final adjustments, really. There we go. So this is missing the white highlights and maybe a little bit of a, a texture overlay. So there's the texture and let's bring in some of the white highlights. That's gonna really make it pop. Let's focus on the head here. It's really gruesome looking with all of the sludge. <laughs> yeah, the white highlights only make it more gruesome. Nice. Let's uh, really make this one pop. Everybody went into lurking mode, it seems. That actually looks uh, pretty damn nasty, which is a good sign in this case. Let's uh, jump back into InDesign and see what it looks like on the card. Yeah, neat. I like it. That's, uh, that's a done for me. This one also is in the main book, so let's have a look what it looks like there. So 
So let's relink the image. And there we go. To resize it. I mean, that looks as nasty as it gets, so uh, that's a good point. Uh, it's only good. Cool, awesome. <clears throat> Kijk, zo ziet hij eruit van ja. Ik heb alleen even die uh, witte highlightjes uh, toegevoegd ja, ja. en uh, Leuk. een klein uh, achtergrondje. Ja, is gewoon. Dus weer goed, hè? Ja, ik heb ook eentje nog. Huh? Ik heb ook nog eentje nog. Oké. Okay. Welke heb jij nog die ik had gestuurd? Ja. Oké. Okay. Um, ja, dat kan. We kunnen ook pizza Luigi halen. Of, uh... Ja, we hebben nog anderhalve. Ik ga één heel pizza en twee halve van de kinderen. De... Van die pizza pesto die je laatst had gemaakt, heel erg lekker. Of die pasta met. Uh... Ja, oh ja, dat kan ook maken. Dan moeten we zelf ook naar de kaas. Moet ik die halen dan? Als jullie naar het paardrijden gaan, dan kan ik wel even boodschappen doen. Dat is goed. Ja? Um, how big is the team? Uh, Lord Smith is uh, me, <clears throat> Christopher in New York, who uh, oversees the product development. We have Robin part time on customer support. And then typically there's one or two writers on a book. There are two to three, sometimes four artists working on a book. And the, the artists, we always hire freelance, so they kind of shift from, from project to project. Oh ja. Uh, ja, trouwens. Ik weet niet zeker of die in het boek gebruikt wordt. Oh. Is er nog uh, die Moonbridge misschien? Of vind je die moeilijk? Die, uh, ik heb ook nog die... Uh, dat standbeeld heb ik nodig. Yeah, so it, I would say, so it's me, Christopher, with more uh, direction and management roles. Uh, but of course, I also do some of the graphics and the layout work. And then there's typically two writers and two to four artists working on a book. And it takes about a year from start to finish to make a completely new book. From the first ideas to planning, Development, finishing touches.
So it's easy. It's a piece of cake. Ja, dat is altijd lastig. Hè? Als ze aan het spelen zijn, dan moet je toch heel altijd uh, vaak nog gaan kijken. Ja, ik vind het vooral vervelend als ik elke keer beroepen word omdat er iets niet goed gaat tussen hen. Ja. Yeah. Ja, dat was gisteren ook. Ja, vanaf ja, twee uur ook niks meer kunnen doen. Het is echt oneenigheid over wie dat er uh, laat op in het begonnen met wie dat er de kinderen aan oh, ja. I'm back. <laughs> do, do.
Ik heb honger, ik moet even een snack pakken denk ik. Alright, this needs to be a nighttime scene again because of the moon. It's gonna be interesting because this needs a little to be a little bit darker for the glowing parts to show up. So uh let's see what happens. All right, no worries. Have a good evening. Enjoy, uh, enjoy playing the game. I'll see you around next time.
think this is the last one I'll do for today. Then I'm gonna take a break. Let's have a look what it looks like in the book. And then we can uh, continue tweaking it. So I uh, relink the file, see what it looks like. Okay. A little bit, yes. For this book, it's a lot. It's a book about forest, so it's a lot, a lot of greens, brown. Um, so it's a little bit of a challenge. You want things to to look consistent, but also. If everything is the same color it can start to look very drab so it's actually a bit of a challenge to to have some variation but also have things look alike it's a slight challenge The uh, the main look and feel is usually determined at the start of the project. We make uh, some concept concepts for the pages and just figure out what it's going to look like in general. And then uh, we continue working on the book and refine the details basically. So towards the end it really starts to, to look better and better. Yes, that's really the challenge. Uniform and also have things be unique. This one is going to be a little bit harder, I think. Mm. 
Need to get rid of all these edges for starters. Some texture overlay. a bit too much. This one is just difficult because we uh, don't really have dark images in the book at all. So I want it to look like it's night, but I can't go too dark. Echt zo warm geworden trouwens? Of? Ja? Ah. Ja, dan kan ik eventueel nog wel boodschappen doen. Ik ga zo toch even stoppen, dus... Uh
All right, we're getting there. Right, looks uh, almost finished. Okay, go on off the cake. All right, this one is finished, and uh, with that, I'm going to call it a day. I'll uh, catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and I uh, appreciate the raid. <laughs> that was fun. So uh, I'll see you guys next time.